Om. Namaste. Welcome everyone to Satsang today here in Rishikesh. And uh, please let me say a big welcome to all those who are joining via live broadcast. And uh, uh, very welcome, big welcome for everyone. And uh, let's see how today turns out. So, very good. Mm. Namaste, Mochi. Namaste. Uh, I've been here for the last uh, two weeks, attending satsang. <coughs> and um, I didn't want to miss the chance to come forward. Yes. There's something that's very afraid of um, uh, being seen, being embarrassed. And um, in the last years of my um, spiritual journey, I felt it's this one also who wants to become enlightened, to be the best or and um, and it's this one who also tries always to get somewhere to make a plan how to get closer and um, I'd like to drop this one. Where did you pick it up? <laughs> because we all know what you are speaking, no? We all know that different people, they, uh, some people are very com com confident, confident, comfortable also, and they are, they are also um, quite at ease to stand up in a in a in a space like this with so many people and they're quite at ease to express themselves, of course. But many people are not like that. And to even come up, it is quite a challenge to come forward and so on. And you, you speak from this place, you say, yes, you know, there's something that feels embarrassed perhaps and a bit shy to come forward, but nevertheless you're here. And also throughout my spiritual life, I've, um, you know, somehow it has been it is the one that perhaps wants to be enlightened and to come more close and to even be more enlightened than the most enlightened one or something like that. So we, we know. <laughs> yes. And it is, it, is, it is good that you can expose it in such a way, no? Um, and then you say, I want to drop this one. Why, why you want to drop it? Just to remind ourselves, right? I mean, it wants freedom, no? You say it wants enlightenment and everything. So why you want to drop it? Yeah, I can see on one side there's this one who wants to be the best, but there's also a, an intuition or a feeling that... Um, Maybe it has its own motives, why it wants to be the best. Hmm? Not competition, so why? Because there's room for many awakened beings, no? Why you want to be the best of them? Uh, super best. I want to be the. Um, I want to be the, the best nobody there can be. <laughs> Somebody. Uh, so, but we understand that thing. Something says, I want to drop that. I want to drop that person. So, is there two two entities there? The one who wants something, and the one who wants to drop the one who wants something. 
let's go through it because in going through it, we thaw out the seeing and we get a bit more, more a clarity around this because very often we speak and we are not quite sure what we have said and like that. So uh, there, there is a sense that there is somebody, some entity that wants something and it used to go by the name I, it's me doing this. But something must have happened and I guess it's through your spiritual journey that you have come to see that that's not really who I am. I am aware of this sense of the one who wants these things. So yes. this one who is aware of the one who wants these things, even enlightenment and so on, and wants to drop that one, is this the true one? Let's take a moment about this. We are going to give up the bad one, the, the one who, who, who wants enlightenment and feels a bit embarrassed but wants to be the best and so on. Uh, another one wants to drop this one. The one who wants to drop this one, is this truly what you are, this one? No. So even this one will have to be dropped as well then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, let's for the moment say that the first one we are going to leave out, outside the door now. So, the second one we are going to leave outside the other door, this one over this side. Okay, so there are none of them. Then what remain now? Let's be slow, let's be clear on this one now. What remains if the first one, who seems to get a bit shy sometimes, have been studying spirituality, feels a little bit now that you know it wants to be the enlightened one but it wants to be the best enlightened one um, and now another one says I want to drop this one, how can I drop this one? And then you are asked, the one who wants to drop the, this one is this really who you are? And something comes, no, it's, even this one is not really who I am. So I said, well then let's see if we leave the two of them out what does remain? Is there a third one? We'll leave them now. We can't refer to them anymore. The first one you have exposed is not you. It was pretending to be the real one, you know, it wants to be the best one and so on, left it out. The one who saw that one and says, No, I don't want this one. I want to drop this one. This one you say, this is also not you, so we leave him this one out the other door. Now what remain? Just uh, experience it, feel it, you know? not, don't just use words only. Words by themselves they won't do. It's not an English class or something. The words by themselves don't do. The feeling must be there also to, 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 to really look. So it, it's, it's a felt recognition. What remains? Have we come to this point too quickly? I feel the mind is trying to find it. Yes, the mind is trying to find it, is also observed. Something observed the first character. And when the question was asked, the one who wants to drop the first character, so the second character, is this you? The answer came, no, this one also is not, we're not there yet. So both, the, both of those were observed and they were rejected as not the real one yet. Now the mind is coming in to try and answer the question, that is also observed. Is the mind the one who is the real one? No. So in the third door, we'll put him back in here. Now what? We are disregarding these because they are not the final one that you are looking for. You are who then? You are what? Which you remain now? The sense I, 
which really, I would say, it is perhaps the most important letter and concept in any language. Hmm? It is a, like a shape shifter, no? It was there in the, in the ego feeling, but then the one that watched the ego also went by the name I. And we say, this one also is not quite, also he has to be gotten rid of. So the second I went, another is still there to say, the mind now is coming. He said, the mind is you? No, not, okay, we throw this one out. Then what is remaining? Experience it also. As you are looking and as we are, we are, we are rejecting these characters, what is happening internally? What is happening? Does it feel, how does it feel internally for you? A sense of presence. Sense of presence. Is that what's left now? A sense of presence? Sense of presence means that by which you know you exist. This I exist feeling. Not just the words, but what the words point to. I am. That is indicating the sense of presence. If there was nobody else in the world, just you, you would have this also to be there, the way that you know that you are alone. I am here. I exist. That is our first knowing. Okay. This I, this sense of presence that you you speak of. Is that the one? The sense of presence now. And if we listen in the right way, uh, this question and the questioner is really somehow we should be on the same page together. You can follow and you can see, yes, yes, I can recognize this. Now there's only the feeling of being. The sense of presence and the feeling of being, they're the same. They're just the, the, the I am, I, I, I am, I'm here, just this. I'm here as what? I am, I am here. I am here as what? Because I am here, uh, there's the functioning of perceiving or perception, meaning, I am the one who is perceiving, somehow I am perceiving the world, life, movement, thoughts, feeling, sensation, all of this is perceived. And the perceiver is who? Naturally you feel, I am the perceiver. Hmm? Everything within any frame of time, from past or future or even present, they are all perceived somehow. There is awareness of, of this. Whatever comes, any feeling or a change of feeling, that is instantly perceived. Huh? It is instantly perceived. You don't have to change, move or get up from right where you are, sitting or standing or lying down, it is perceived like that. It doesn't take time to perceive. Instantly it is perceived. So therefore, everything you have learned, everything we have perceived, everything that we have experienced in the life is because we perceive them. Whether it is thought or an object or a relationship or an ideology, it is because we perceive and found it agreeable and we kept the impression of what we perceive inside us. It is clear enough, you would say? And, um, so, whatever we perceive, even the thing that you love so much, 
or enjoy so much, you cannot maintain or sustain unbroken connection with it. At some point the attention will go somewhere else and the thing that you are so much engaged with will go out of your mind and, and it will be replaced by perhaps another object or another thought, another feeling. Do we see this or not? Yes? But the, the looking place, the place where anything is seen is the same place. Would it be like this? So, from this same place of looking, the first guy was seen and it was admitted what really is here is not this first guy. Hmm? It's not the one who wants all these things at once and has been practicing. So it's not quite. You see? It has some resemblance of what I feel I am, but it's not quite me. And the one who is looking at this first one and saying, you know, I want to drop this association with this first guy. This one also is not me. It's coming close, but it's also not me. So let's drop both of them. Then I ask, what remain? And you say that some mind stuff is going on. The mind wants to answer this question. Are you the mind? You say, no, I'm not the mind. Okay, so mind is out of it now. Then say, what remain? And you say now, the sense of presence. And each time we are becoming more subtle. Now the sense of presence is very subtle. The person, the sense of the person, identified with the body as I'm a man or I'm a woman, I'm a child, I'm an elderly person, whatever. It identified with the body strongly. It identified with its conditioning. Uh, quite strongly, so that if you are a Muslim or a Hindu, you have a strong sense of what that means for you. If you are a Christian or a, an atheist, you have a strong sense of what that means for you. And you categorize or define yourself in terms of those um, concepts that seem to please you. You say, that's what I am. But the sense of presence is not locked into those definitions. It's not male or female. It's more subtle than that. It has no particular belief system. It is just the, uh, the intelligent principle, I suppose you can say like that, that allows us to perceive everything else. And also to perceive itself also. Then I ask, is this you? The questions are getting more and more difficult to answer maybe. Is the sense of presence, now we become very subtle now to speak about the sense of presence. I say, is this you? Because the sense of presence, it is very subtle. It's, what's it like, this sense of presence? Remember that you've rejected the other guys, okay? Now, sense of presence, what's it feel like? Are you happy with sense of presence now? It has no judgments. It is without desire. Can the sense of presence stay just as the sense of presence without contacting the mind and the all identities? Can it simply be aware of them but not identify with them? Here begins spiritual practice because it seems as though the sense of presence is felt but out of habit there seems to be a reflex to go back to the state of the person. Have we noticed this or not? And then uh, we are feeling the sense of presence, feels very good, we feel very peaceful, think, ah, oh, it's very nice, very nice. But then some, some form or some image comes in the mind and then it creates a link with other images and next minute you feel you are in thought and you are behaving again like a person and by the time you recognize it, there is a feeling that, oh, I lost the sense of presence. But you have not lost the sense of presence.
It's by the sense of presence that you feel I've moved away from the sense of presence, which is only a thought. Tricky. Because the sense of presence is a state of consciousness. And consciousness is the, the medium through which we know or have the sense of knowing or experiencing things. So any experience you have is a testimony that you are conscious. Because without consciousness, you cannot experience anything. So if now we have come to, we are okay with leaving the associations with the story, the person who has a story, okay, or history, we leave this side now, and what is the sense of presence that's left? Just kind of feel it out, what is there? Just sense of presence, what is there? What's the feeling? What's the state? Something missing? No. no. When we are identified with the states of personhood, the consciousness becomes quite cluttered. It is saving lots of images that it feels will be useful for it now or later. So it becomes very, very crowded with concepts and sometimes very, very reactionary. Little things put you off or upset you or something like this. That's the state of personhood. But the moment you are recognizing that the sense of personhood is something, it's like a sensation or a memory or a construct that is perceived, the minute that that is recognized, that it is only an object of perception, it doesn't feel so, so close. There's some space opens up, and you're aware that, but this is seen from, from a deeper place of seeing, and here feels much more spacious. Without the identity to personhood or ego, something is much more spacious, and naturally, you will appreciate, you will enjoy this state more. And nevertheless, something will still fluctuate. By habit, something will still go back to the person. You will get an email or a, a, a call on your phone and somehow you will be in the state of mind of a person again. And there will be a little frustration. But the taste of presence is with you now. The, the, the taste of conscious presence, or you may say the conscious taste of presence is with you now. And then now there's an urge to go back, to be in the higher, purer state. We follow? Because we can change subject if we want to. <laughs> okay, so uh, now this something feels now, I, I, I don't want to spend so much time in this other state of person anymore. Because when I'm in the person, then my moods start to come. Then fears are coming. Anxiety is coming. The relationships start to give trouble. But when I'm in the state of presence, ah, I feel like an empty sky. It feels, whoa, spacious. Is that the same one? Is it the same one? Is it the same me? How many me's are there? I already throw two out and the mind, and still I feel more me. <laughs> throwing out the first guy, throwing out the second guy who didn't want the first guy, and throwing out the mind who wanted to tell the story about it, and I am more happy than I've ever been without those two guys. And uh, 
something feels just remarkable and still my senses are functioning we didn't get rid of my senses I did not get rid of my capacity to think even it is here but it is not dominating the consciousness there seems to be some kind of harmony how did that come about I don't know because I didn't do anything particular I just disregarded the first guy and the second guy and uh, somehow I'm here then the question come how can I stay here I like this place how can I is there a rent for this place I mean, how can I stay here can we have some guarantee Muji you have a sort of uh, how we stay I said how are you staying now I just am I just am here how can I stay here because little things come up and they bring my attention back to my person and then I seem like I'm person again and I don't like to be in the person before you've spent 30 years in the person doing all kinds of things and, and now I can't I don't want him now why you don't want huh? no now you want to be presence the presence feels the presence is in uh, presence rocks uh, uh, yeah, yeah. how can I stay here Muji? this is what they want to ask how to stay uh, I said well not by effort if you try to stay by effort you become a stayer you create another image self image as the one who is a stare. The fact is that the stare can't stay. He's also come and go. What is the key then to stay? Hmm? One is this whatever you can recognize, whatever you can recognize, know you're not that. Listen, that is. Whatever you can perceive, recognize tangibly, whether it is a thought or a sensation, a memory, an object, a person, a relationship, an ideology, philosophy, uh, uh, a religion, or a, a political idea or something, it is not you. It is subject to change. And this is the field of change. Everything is changing here, including the body that you are wearing also is changing also and there's awareness of that change sometimes uh, we were not aware that we are aware but it was taught and shown that but you are aware so oh my god it's true i was aware but i didn't know i was aware now i am aware that i'm aware you see and now it feels different because there's a sense that when I get angry about something, the angry one, I would not have uh, felt it could be observed. It was too intimate, it's too tight. There was no space to observe because it, in order to observe, there must be some distance to observe one thing to observe another. And when I'm angry or passionate, I seem to merge with my anger and there's no space to observe it. But since looking, and exercising and seeing, well, yes, that is seen, and there's a strong thought, I'm not good enough for this. I said, but that's just a thought, that is seen. Who told you that belonged to you? I said, no, sir. Uh, I mean, I can just let it go? Yes. Wow! I can just let it go. I wasn't destined to own any thought. But we need some thoughts though. Don't we need some thoughts that we, in our own little package? I said, well, no, you don't need the thoughts, but you are free to, to experience thoughts. But the mistake has been that uh, you have identified too strongly with it. And the first identification was the identification with the body and then with the the conditioning, the place you are brought up, the, the environment, the, the kind of things, all of this uh, contributed 
to the present idea of who you think you are. And whatever idea we have about ourselves, it's constantly changing. If we could look back in our life in sections of three years, you would look and see that maybe three years ago, I was having some very strong feelings about, you know, Mexico. I really wanted to be there. I really felt like, you know, I bought a sombrero and everything. I was ready to go. And, but now, actually, I feel nothing for it. But three years ago, nobody could stop me. It was a passion. Now it's I'm just a vague memory. Three years before this, you know, I wanted to be soldier. But now, <laughs> I had no chance. Before that, I had, so you see, we have had many instances where we, we would have defined ourselves in terms of the things that we, we love, our passions, and who we take ourselves to be. But thankfully, they moved on, or you moved on. Something changed, and you're happy that they changed. Myself also, there was a time when it was the season for Afros. Everybody has Afros. You know, it's this big mop on our head. And, you know, this. and uh, cheesecloth shirts, and flare trousers, and clogs. <laughs> Somebody thought of clogs uh, from Sweden or something. And uh, that was, I thought I'd found my eternal style. I thought, wow, that's, I mean, I can live like this forever, you know. Thankfully, <laughs> those seasons pass, and I, I don't show anybody those photographs anymore. I don't <laughs> so anything in life is going to be like that. It's going to be something you're fascinated with for a while, but by the nature of the senses and the mind, it will change. And if you sit and reflect on this a bit, you will agree, actually everything seems to be in a kind of flux. Everything is coming and going. Everything that I see is coming and going. Even my face, look in the mirror, whoa, another wrinkle, oh my God. Everything is changing. Is there anything that is not changing? Is there anything that is not changing? Because whatever we see, whatever you love, whatever you are you're passionate about, whatever you possess, one day will be gone, as so many things have gone before. And even the body that you need to enjoy these things, one day that also will go. What's the point of all of this? It's, your passion is so alive, your, your, your vigor, your life force is so powerful, but also it's fading, also, one day also gone. Is it a curse? Why it must be like this? Hmm? Then at different times you're happy for change, because change is also part of the dance of creation, that things must change. But at the same time, we are searching for a happiness that doesn't go away. Everything goes away. We want also a happiness, a joy, that does not go away. We also want a life that doesn't end just in death, finito. So, are we fantasizing about this? We can, but there is a reality uh, to all of this. You must find that which is unchanging. We have a body which is always changing. We have a mind or mindset that is always changing. But there is something else that is not changing. And even though it is not changing, it never becomes stagnant, it never grows old. It never fades. It is the source. Hmm? And we are here to prove if this is true and see if you can make this discovery of that which is not changing. When you have discovered that which is unchanging, yeah, we are using the word unchanging at the moment, but there is much more to it than unchanging. It is the source of all that is changeful. 
while itself is unchanging. Finding which a mortal being goes to immortality, uh, goes from ignorance to wisdom, from suffering to joy, from selfishness to love, from darkness to light. Is it poetry? No. And I am going to stand behind my words in saying this, because you are going to be the where it is proven. It has to be proven. And it is not enough to say, yes, I mean, do you know, you go this place, everything is fine. No, really in any genuine search must end in experience, not just in philosophy or in ideology. You must experience that for yourself. And this is what all of this is from my standpoint. The opportunity is to search for what is eternal within yourself and to find joy that does not fade. Although in your joy may come moments of sorrow or a little bit of some moods may come, but they cannot stay. They are part of the change. So you are going to discover the unchanging within the changing. the stillness within the movement, you will know both. How to do that? I started by telling you, whatever you see, whatever you perceive, whatever you have tasted, whatever you remember, hmm, all this comes and goes. You will know that. That which observes the world on this side of the eyes, uh, the world of the, the five elements and their, and their coming together, the world of changes, of otherness, of thingfulness, all that is changing. And the world behind the eyes, the world of feelings and emotion and sensation and thought, memory, imagination, that also is observed. Where is this observer? Where is the location of that which observes inside and outside simultaneously? Where is this? Just allow the question, to be asked for a moment. Whatever you see comes and goes. That which is seeing all that comes and goes, even the most subtle things, hmm? like for instance space. Space is very subtle. Yet you can perceive space. Why? because you are subtler than space even. There are some sensations we each experience that you cannot, you cannot talk about them. They are too subtle, there are no words for them. Still, your consciousness perceives them. So, that which is perceiving everything else, can that be also perceived, was my question. Hmm? If we have come to this question now, you have come to one of the most important questions in the human kingdom. Can the perceiver of all that is perceivable, can the perceiver be perceived? Is there a perceiver as an entity? Can it be looked at? Can it be studied? Can somebody tell me this? But you must find out. Don't speak from a book, unless it's your living book. Right now, there is a functioning of, the, of perception. You are conscious, you know that you are conscious. Hmm? If sleep begins to knock on your door, something is aware of the sleep. 
And I said, don't go with sleep. And a response to that come. That which is aware of all responses, of all actions, reactions, interactions, can it be recognized? And where are you in relation to that? Where are you? In, in light of the questions and the points I've made, where are you? Are you in the position of the perceiver or elsewhere? Are you something being perceived or are you the one who is perceiving? Have I gone too far? No. Okay. Who are you? Are you an object in front of the lens of perception? Are you behind the camera of perception, looking up where? Or are you both? So these questions are not merely for um, curiosity. It must be that you must use this because you are discovering about you. This, all this is about your own self. What you are going to discover is about your own self. And it will not merely be information. It will become experience. And that is the difference. Belief or knowledge must be transformed into experience. Because if you only know something mentally or intellectually, it will not stay with you. My question again, everything you can perceive, you can discern whether something is imaginary or actual, or whether it's from yesterday or it's right now or earlier this morning, or something you're hoping to experience. All this you know. The ability of consciousness is amazing. Huh? All you can perceive, everything. But that which is perceiving, can it be recognized right now? This is a, a right now question. What are you discovering? So don't just listen. Uh, uh. No, really look. In satsang, the beings have come to discover, not just to learn, but for direct experience and to discover. So this question is a freedom question. It is a discovering question. Someone, please. What have you found? These are one of the final questions, and these is going to be one of the final, not necessarily answers, huh? but revelation or direct experience or recognition. So you have this, or should I let someone else come? I don't know. Okay, who was there to put the hand? You come, say. Thank you for starting us off. Stay with it. Yes, go to the microphone now. Okay, just do, I just want the one who is most keen and want to answer this question. If we are, yes, so go right, answer, I don't mind who it is now to start with. I can't answer your question. You can or cannot? Cannot. You cannot, okay. Go ahead. And why is this? I'm here because.
of a need. A need for healing. Healing from my family. Healing for myself. When we go on aeroplane, I notice on the aeroplane they tell you before they take off if you have some decompression in the aircraft and you're losing oxygen, some masks will come down. Put yours on first, then your children. So you put it on to your children, you lose consciousness, they're gone. You save you first. It is not selfish, it's intelligence. You put the mask on first. So if you want healing, you be healed first. And what is the greatest healing? To wake up. That is the universal um, medicine for all hills to wake up to who you are. So you say, I want healing, I want healing for my family. So, uh, family, I'm going to leave for the moment because you are here. You get healed and you may know and you may be find that your parents get healed through you. Yes. I'm very attached to the. No, the I body. want somebody to answer my question now. <laughs> we have a lot of time for your question. Somebody has to come to answer my question now. And then we can come to that maybe another point. Yes, I will deal with that. But this question, maybe if we get it, maybe we can all go back to our countries today. <laughs> Short season in India, everybody woke up. I also would like to wake up. Yes, that's why I'm here. I'm here for freedom. Okay. I need my question answering, please, urgently. <laughs> yeah, come now. Yes. Namaste Muchi. Yes, yes. So when I'm in presence, I'm aware that I am shifting between presence and person. So there is... So you are aware that there's a shift from person to presence, from presence to person, okay? So I am before even the person, uh, the per presence. But listen, I'm listen, listen, listen. You said, you said, I'm aware I am shifting between person and presence. I rephrased it for you to make it more spacious. I say that you are aware that there's a shift between presence and person. Yes. Okay. If there is a shift between person and presence, what is recognizing this shift? What can see both presence and person then? So when I come here, there is like It's like I'm melting, but I'm also seeing the melting. Yes. And as this question, can I perceive the perceiver, keeps taking me backwards, there is like, I just end up. It must not be a mental question, first of all. Mental question is satisfied by mental answers. It's not a mental question. It is an explorer's question. It means that you, you must find, you must discover what is there, what you are discovering. It cannot be merely speculative or theoretical. It, it is instant, it is direct, it is immediate, you see? Mm -hmm. There is a melting away. It's, it's yeah. Yes. It's not the melt, the melting away is fine. Whatever is melting away is fine. But we can't wait until the melting happens. 
what happens is that something is watching, melting is happening. Is exactly. That, is that melting? That which is watching, melting happen, is this melting? No, it's not. It's just here. And it's everywhere. I need your help here. Because you didn't own it. You did not own it. You didn't step up to it. You answered the question, but you kept yourself apart from your answer. It's happening all the time. I can see that. And I know it's just you who can take me through. I cannot do it. An answer is given, answer is given, but the answer is not accepted. Why is it not accepted, you see? Because if it is accepted, it's accepted only conceptually. This question must bring about a change in you. You must become the answer. Or another way of putting it, you're not going to become anything. You're going to stop becoming things. Because you say, you see, I know it is always here. But who is answering? Who is answering the question? I know it is always here, that which we are talking about, Muji, the great thing worth discovering, is always here. But you are what who is speaking? Are you that? Not yet. I am still standing apart. You imagine this. You imagine this, please. You, we all are imagining this. Yes. Nothing can be apart. It is just habits of lifetime, lifetimes maybe. You are saying, yes, I know it is always here. Hmm? But for it, for you to notice it is always here, you must also be always here. Because if you come and go, you cannot say it's always here because maybe when you're gone, it goes as well too. So to know it, it is always here, you must also be always here. How can, you, how can you be always here? Who are you? Everybody now is falling off the swinging bridge. Everybody. Oh! Who is going to be left here now? See, right here you say, you know, only you can take me through, only you can take me through. My response may not seem kind, but again, it is you cannot be taken through. You, this you, has to vanish or be shot. Then I'm you sorry. shoot. You are already dead for me. <laughs> this is. Uh, but it has to be understood, it is not a joke. It's like this, you are uh, alive only in your own imagination as the thing you are you're thinking you are. What you truly are is this. What we are living as is the idea we have of who we are. This is why maybe, though all are this, all are this, 
Yet there seem to be few examples of this. Why? Because it is so seductive, the idea we have of ourselves as person, as the journeyer, as the seeker, as the one getting closer, as the one to you see. This is this is the this is the power of non-dual understanding. Why? It is immediate. If there's a journey, it's from here to here. That's all. How long will this take? And I'm going to tell you that in the truth, there is not even that journey to take. I have to be careful when I speak, because it is easier that misunderstanding will happen before understanding takes place. But nevertheless, I must put this knowledge in the world again to tell you that is it. You are already this. I know that in saying that, there's not going to be anybody go, Oh, thank you, Muji. Oh, ping. It's not going to happen like that. <laughs> it has to be said because the consciousness has to, has to drink its own juice for a moment, though it may not understand what kind of juice is drunk. I have to say this thing, and then we see how much. It's like reversing the glove. You're reversing the glove. When you, re when you reverse the glove, there's always some bits that are still stuck the other way. And then you have to squeeze them out, squeeze them out. For some seekers, it is like squeezing out the finger impression to reverse the glove. But at the moment, I'm talking about it because I'm waiting for the one who is edible. Not eligible, only edible. <laughs> so it's not you then. Okay. So Just I will test. I will try to answer your question. Oh, okay. Based on my experience, okay. my little experience. Um, the only, it's hard to put in words. So I will. I, all I can say is, the impression that I had was that it was awareness of some kind, an awareness. And when I tried to examine it further, a question popped up, which was, who is experiencing? Who is the experiencer? And the answer was, there is none. That was the answer. And consciousness, the way that it played it out for, if you want to call it an understanding, was that I had arrived like at another shore and I was looking back and then these questions arose. And the question, what is it? It, it played as a huge gem. A huge gem. 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 Mm. Like a diamond, but the light was not necessarily blazing. It was like. But clearly, you must know that it cannot be that. No, it's not that. This is the mind. Yeah. This is the mind yeah. trying to understand. Hmm. But the. This reality. Is is playing in, the source of a transformation not only for who I thought I was, but also a bigger transformation, continual transformation. Mm -hmm. But it's not a place of transformation. It's a place of quiet. This is my understanding. This is my experience. 
transformations also, transformation also, if it take place, something is aware of transformation. Also. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Is that going to be transformed? Something that is aware? No. Yeah. It is. Yes. And what knows it is? This is the this is the paradox. It just is. So this is why. No, but it must take. There is no. A, it must take a, 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 an, uh, an intelligence, mm -hmm. um, a truthful intelligence, mm -hmm. to bear witness to the fact that it is. Mm -hmm. Who is giving that statement? Is it? Uh, I don't know. I can't. I can't see it. I yeah. can't. Put you, my you, be, on it. you being what? Just the slow down. An, it's okay. It's an slow. awareness. But it's words fail. Okay. Let's say all words fail then, including, mm -hmm. including mine. Mm -hmm. All words fail. Mm -hmm. Leave, leaves what now? So wordless. So now, please be with us. This. Uh, What I have found maybe answers the lady's question before me is, again, in my experience, mm, that I feel like I am at all levels, everywhere, but beyond as well. So where there's no levels. I don't know if you understand this. Yes, yes. Uh, and when I manifest, into this body and to this so-called reality. Yeah, like, like now? So-called reality, mm -hmm. because it's a part of. Hmm? It is natural. Uh. But I'm not quite used to it yet. But there's no like, separation, if you will. Hard to explain. It's not a, it's very subtle. But there's no difference. This manifestation, this physical manifestation in time and space, okay, is an, it, like an extension. How does that make you feel as you're speaking now? Makes me feel calm, makes me feel, I don't know. Again, it's not a question of feeling. I can't tell you feeling. You ask me how I feel. Sometimes I'm happy, joyous, ecstatic. Sometimes I'm sad. And the way that I'm feeling when this is happening is as I come into this realm of being, which is the physical, Normally, it's accompanied with great compassion, sometimes unbearable. Mm -hmm. And when I am going back to the source, it's like wisdom. It's like going Okay, like next this. one, let me try here, you. Hello. Hello. So, um, how creation can understand the Creator if the Creator is the creation? And where are you answering from? From what perspective are you answering? Um, 
if we are talking about perspectives, it's from my experience. This means like, because we are always talking from our perspective. You know, but from the perspective from of the, the creation mind. or from the creator? Right now I'm talking from creation. Okay. Because, um, how to put this in, in, in the right uh, words? Um, Right now, by the way, the mind is talking because mind is who is making the duality. I mean, but not because the mind is the creation. That's how we are creating the whole illusion of being gods right now in our heads. If we would understood, if we could understood that we are the one, if we are the one who we are right now, then there will be no duality. Basically, mind creates this illusion of being God, let's say. So I know these words like, we are God, but when we are taking this to our egoic mind part, then we are like doomed for suffering and, and duality. But if you know that there is only one. I mean, everything is one. It's not me yeah. that is. And well, yeah, there is. Do, there's you, do you know this? Yeah, I know. Okay. I mean, I like, but it's it's really interesting because um, egoic mind is coming back and having fun with me from time to time. And <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm. It seems like I touched this, but sometimes it slips away, and I know why, mm. and I know I know what is going on. But it's this is like a fish in the sea. Fish, fish is fish. She's not thinking that she's a individual. She's just doing what she's doing. And the fish is swimming in the water. But yeah. Right now, I'm still talking from my mind because that's how it's, it's, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Um, Guruji. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as long as the perceiver is a phenomenon, it'll be like a mirror reflecting the mirror. You keep asking the question, who perceived that? And who perceived that perception? So that was a trick question. The word is not the perceiver can be perceived. There's no perceiver, it's the perceiving. So when it's perceiving, it's not a phenomenon. So it is self-evident. So the perceiver, instead of you, know, you tricking us with the word perceiver, you could ask us, perception, can it be perceived? Perception is self-evident. As long as the perceiver is thought to be a phenomenon, another perceiver will perceive it. And that another perceiver will perceive that. And another perceiver will perceive that. It is like two it, mirrors reflecting not, each not other. Not necessarily, not necessarily like that. If you found out that the question could be a trick, and then the question is also helping you hmm, to look and to see, well, can the perceiver be, is there a perceiver of such? Um, then you must find out, because ordinarily we feel there must be some, because we take ourselves to be tangible entities, final answer must also be tangible in that respect. So you have to explore and find out, ultimately, are you tangible or intangible? And you will say, what? I'm intangible if I am in that state. And it's blasphemy to say that I'm intangible when I am talking as a person. So, so you're either one or the other, you're not both also. I would like to be behind the lens and I, I seek your help for that. So your, your answer to the question came from in front of the lens? that the perceive, there's no perceiver, there's only perceiving? 
You must have looked behind the lens to say that, no? Yes. At one point, I was looking behind the lens, and then the yeah. question came, who perceived that? And then, again, I, I said, who perceived that? And, I, and the analogy I was able to come up with was two mirrors reflecting each other. It's much more intimate than that. You, you, you pushed it out in to make another image of that. Yes. Yeah, you are to make use of it. I only want to meet you, not mirrors. We were really close there at that point where you were saying, <laughs> we meaning the group, when you were at that point where you were asking us to be behind the lens and then it got diluted. I request you, I don't know how we can get back to that place. The place where you Guruji, my beloved, I am. <laughs> no, it's not enough. <laughs> uh, you, if you, you must qualify. It's enough to say everybody says I am. You know, God says I am. The devil also says I am. Huh? Uh, the, the wise man say I am. Fool man say I am. What is it the same I am they're referring to? Nobody has ever seen me. Carry on, I want to hear from you also. Stay where you are, but you come. You come. Yeah. Thank you. I cannot see, I cannot see myself, mm. but I cannot help to be. I spent uh, quite some time inside your uh, citric acid. It was to help to burn out what you are not, so that what you are could be clear it would be a non-phenomenal recognition had to take place. Who will understand a non-phenomenal recognition? Is it? Yes. It means that something was huh? What say? She said there is only that. Yes, yes. Only that can recognize that. Only that can recognize that. Not only is your answer true, but it was answered truthfully. Sometimes the answer can be true, but it's only intellectually. How to know when the answer is true and the answerer is true? So I'm, I'm very happy with this one. I want to finish with this one. Thank you. Let her finish at this point. Yeah. You say, it was fine while we were behind. Somehow we managed to get to get behind the lens, okay? Who gave you permission to go behind the lens? If you use the word blasphemy, is it blasphemy to be behind the lens? 
if I'm lying, I am talking as a person and I said, I was behind the lens as consciousness, then I'm lying. That's why I said blasphemy. But again, the problem is intellectual. I am able to approach it intellectually. Yes. Only. Yes. That which is behind the so-called lens, because this image of lens and, uh, you know, it has to be spoken in the realm of consciousness on behalf of the Absolute, because the Absolute cannot really say it. It is a wordless place. Are you still with me? Yes. Okay. So, um, that which is behind the lens can never not be behind the lens. It is there before lens. It is there before lens. It causes the lens to be and what is seen through the lens to be. And all of it is only itself. But there is a one problem here. There is this ignorance, an entity called ignorance, which is making me fail to see that. Yes. The, the entity called ignorance manifests because of the entity called arrogance. They come like that because if there is arrogance, then somehow it becomes blindness. You see? The ignorance must play because in the manifestation, the dualistic functioning of consciousness is for a purpose. It, it, it creates the sense of joy and sorrow and wickedness and uh, compassion and heaven and hell and life and death and all of these things. Also wisdom and ignorance. All of these things must play because the consciousness, which you may say is the child of the Absolute, consciousness being, in my term of usage, I mean consciousness as the dynamic functioning field where we have the sense of experiencing and the sense of knowing, isn't it? So in that medium of knowingness, you see, there, it is the medium of duality, experience, interrelated opposites and so on. You see, ignorance must be there. Because of ignorance, uh, the life, the life, the life force and consciousness that has adopted the personhood as its medium for experiencing, it will suffer for a while, uh, but through its suffering, it will aspire to be free of suffering, to, to be free of suffering, and that aspiration helps it to grow beyond the reach of suffering. That is the urge for awakening, the urge for not perishing. That is what's happening. So in the play, all of it is useful. The consciousness is using every part of its functioning and self-tasting in order to, in a, in a sense, wake up or come back home to its, its unassociated self. Am I not aspiring enough for the ignorance to be dispelled? The aspiration must move from person to presence. The, the person aspiring can only aspire to so much. While aspiring, it's changing its, its, its structure. The, the aspiring person is, while aspiring, is already changing, undergoing some change in its structure. It's becoming thinner. It's, it's taking on the qualities subtle as they are, of what? Uh, the sense of being is becoming more subtle, more refined. The more subtle and more refined it becomes, the easier it is to simply grasp intuitively uh, that which is, to recognize, to recognize uh, non-phenomenally what is to be recognized in itself. Is that the purpose of sadhana? Because I was thinking, yes. Yeah. I was thinking, if I aspire, if I am a good person, I'm still a person. 
And I did not make the connection, be, being a good person, doing the sadhana, and becoming that. Being a good person or a bad person, whatever kind of person you are, you are consciousness first. It is consciousness in varying stages of identity to believe itself to be merely personal, or to believe itself to be the presence, or to know itself as the absolute. It is always consciousness, is the base of your perceiving. I am aware there is nothing for the cons consciousness to do. And for the person, nothing the person can do can become, to become the consciousness, because the person is always going to be the person. What should Actually, I... Actually, it is going to come to the consciousness that there is no person. That is something that is going to happen in you, that the person is largely imagined. The person is largely imagined. What you are experiencing, the way you are experiencing existence is because of your consciousness, not because of your person. The unique taste and the misconceptions and misunderstandings come through your mind and the person, in the form of the person. It is a modification of consciousness to be perceiving the world through personhood. But I am aware that this person is false. Everything is false. Maybe it's like a movie. We know it's a movie, but we still get, you know, I still get scared or I still get emotionally, you know, reactive to a movie, even though I know it's a movie. So I know this person is false, but I still am drawn to the person. That which is drawn to the person is also false. It, it, everything is connected to the true. But the more it extends into the belief of personhood, the more it seems to be floating away from the truth. But I want to cut this ignorance, where this delusion that, please help me. You are being helped. I know. <laughs> oh, yes. At this moment, is anything possible? At this moment, everything is possible. I know. <laughs> everything. And I mean that, not just being flippant about it, if everything has to be possible. Um, if you get stuck and you somehow are very resistant in that stuckness, I would say it is not the most auspicious time because it becomes just a sort of mental battle or something. But uh, I am ready. You see, you might think you're ready. Right. We, we, I trust we, in you. I don't want a pill, but I'm sure that you know, following your teachings, one day. This is, this is the way that we look and then we thaw out some complex ideas that are preventing you from just knowing instantly. Sometimes the mind, we go into the mind and we are still holding some impression in the mind and consciousness that you don't want to let go of. And you may think you want to let go of them until the chance come that now is the time to decide whether you are going to keep holding on or letting go. And you may choose in that moment to hold on. You see, nothing is decided before in the play itself. All I can say is that it seems to get warm and it seems like all possibleness is possible. And then in one moment it can just, the, the atmosphere can change because you have chosen to, to stay in the place of fear or something like that. I just want to say we all love you, Guruji. You, you know, you are one of the teachers who brings us to the you know, the doorstep of heaven and still not satisfied. You want us to get in. Till then you are striving. Gratitude is, you know, immense. There's no word to thank you. At your feet, thank you very much. Yes. Actually, what I'm trying to show you is that actually you are already in, in a sense. No? No, no, it is true, you know, because I can't make you to be something you already are. You are in, thinking you are out, isn't it? Yes. Eh? Because, um, as I, I often use the, the, as an example, Rumi's po poem, it says, you know, knocking on the door, it opens, I have been knocking from inside. I feel it is a very beautiful um, metaphor, no? Because uh, you are already inside, and we are imagining we are outside. And what is this knocking at the door? This is, this is your search in order to have clarity. You think you're outside, want to get inside. When you knock on the door, then the door opens. Until the door opens, you don't realize that you are inside. 
So all this play has to be just to show you that you have always been here, dreaming you are out there. You have always been the self, imagining you are a person. But it is a mistake that is universal. It was an intended mistake. Because the, the one can only be the one. But in order to appear as the many, it had to dream it somehow. Guruji, it must be really funny for you to look at all of us asking all these questions. <laughs> no, I mean, because I myself was asking them at one time. And um, it, it's not funny like haha, you know, like this. It, it's, it's funny um, in the sense that, uh, yes, you are so much that. And uh, all that can happen is the degree to which you're, there's openness and grace to, to, to just for that to drop away, that, that, that cataract of false identity to, to fall away. I can only ask one thing, one more thing for your grace that alone can dispel. This yes. misconception. Yes, it is here because there is great joy in seeing recognition happening. There is great joy, and uh, because I know the cost of not recognizing, and that we perpetuate states of ignorance, which brings uh, chaos, it brings pain, it brings suffering, it brings just anxiety. So, of course, I, I don't want to. To see that happening, uh, when I know that, but you are the perfect, you are the perfection also, you know. So, so something feels always inside my heart very urgent uh, to to say, but why not today? Why would you, if you know that you are free today, uh, you know, would you want to wait until next week? So, I, there is there are different there are different ways in which it manifests. The evolutionary path, where we feel that we are the person growing more towards presence, and one day we'll finally meet, you know, the Lord or whatever in that way. That is also an expression of consciousness. It creates. It's a big river. But is is there a problem like a cellular reaction? Just like how I said, even though we know it is false, the tendency is going to become that. Even though for a time, for a time it will be like that, for a time. But gradually, once you have tasted, once you have had that deep taste of the self, um, it, it won't let you go. Like it says, you know, like uh, uh, if you're in the mouth of a tiger, it's over, basically. It's not going to let you go. So once you have tasted that, that taste won't come out of you. What that taste does, it makes you realize how bad the other taste was. And every time you go back to that taste as a reflex, it's just going to feel, oh my God, how could I? And your tolerance for the state of personhood is going to become increasingly unbearable. I don't even know if I have tasted it. Everybody has tasted it. Maybe you're not conscious that it's it. Because even the, the space between your thinking, your mind must come to rest in it. But you, we're not aware. And awareness is the name of the game. Transcendence and awareness is the name of that game. Because I gave the story that uh, uh, there was once, uh, you know, the two, did I tell the story about the two friends who were um, very close and uh, one of them was married? And uh, I told it. So it's with you, no? You know about that? That uh, one had left, one of, one of the men uh, had uh, a lot of money which he had hidden under the floorboards of the house because he didn't want his wife to find it too quickly because he felt that she would spend it on just nonsense things. So he wanted to have something in store for them in case anything happened to him. And then he told his friend, and then but his friend was a traveler. His friend went away for some years, and when he returned, his friend found that uh, is, uh, that he had died. This this dear friend had died, who was married, and he saw the friend's wife and child on the street begging 
and they were in a wretched way. Begging, begging for stuff. He says, Amma, what are you doing here? What happened? And she looked at him and she goes, I remember you. You are the f good friend of my husband. She's, he says, yes, what are, you, what are you doing? What are you begging on the street? He says, you don't know? My husband died three years ago. We have nothing, we have nothing. We have to beg every day. So then this friend says, Amma, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. But I have good news for you. And just even as he said, I have good news for you, her mood began to change because he knew, she knew that he was a trusted friend. So if he said there's good news, even without knowing what it is, already her spirit was lifting. He says, come, come with me, come with me. You see, your husband has left a lot of money for you, but he was afraid to give it to you, to reveal this to you too early because he was worried that you would just waste it. Come with me. He put money under the house. So then they took up the floorboards and they started digging, digging, and then, whoa, and they hit another time and they found a box full of gold. Now it has been there for many years and it was always hers. But was she rich? Was she rich? She was not rich because she was unaware of it, even though it was always there and it was belonged to her. It is a good metaphor for what we're speaking. We are all this, we are all that, oneness. We are all that. All the answer a human being could want, all a human being could ever want is already in you. But you're unaware of it. And we look outside for things and stuff to do some bungee jumping or whatever we have to do and stuff, which is fine too, it's fun also like this. But once you discover it, or you begin to discover, you see, because even from hit the box, already excitement is coming. So once you discover that, you begin to discover this, how can you go by, maybe by reflex, by habit, next morning she goes out on the street with her begging bowl, uh, and somebody goes, Mom, what are you doing? You go, all this money, uh, you go back. Maybe it will happen like that, that uh, you discover, but for a while, the habit, the reflex, is to go back to your mind, what am I going to do today? And, and somebody reminds you, what are you talking? You are free. Oh, I forgot I'm free. You know, you can't forget, we have forgotten that we are free. And so we are living in the belief of bondage and that has a certain taste to it. But how to get that into your blood cell, into the very DNA of your heart? That chemistry grace is releasing for you. Okay. Guruji, ah. I, am, I am behind these eyes mm. and I'm out there looking at myself. Mm. Then why are you crying? Because I'm everywhere. Can I ask you a question? What is more true as an experience for you? That you are everything or nothing? Nothing. That is true. That is true. Because everythingness has a kind of thingness about it. But nothing is weightless. It's effortless. It's, 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 it's the most beautiful. Not what the mind thinks of it, but how it is. How it is. See? 
some beings have discovered the what it is to be zero. So when the count for the statistics of beings on the earth are taken, they will not be counted. You don't have to tell anybody you are a zero. You're, you're getting into trouble telling them you are one anyway. How much more trouble to say you are zero? It's not to be told. Watch from zero. Watch as zero. And don't tell anybody your secret. See what happened to you. Eh? Sometimes I say, live as though you have no rights, you have no entitlement. Some beings, they hear this, they see tremendous value in this. They find just, it is unbound. They are boundlessly happy. Some beings, they experience immediate unburdening. They are, they are like a, a balloon that you let you blow into, you let it go without a knot, and they are whizzing around the universe. They are so happy they can't just being nothing at all. And some are afraid of the sense of nothingness. The one who is empty of manipulation, intentions, plans and strategies is flowing spontaneously and effortlessly as the universal consciousness. They are one with the pulse of existence. Life serves them well, but they don't mind And perhaps this is why we come into this gradually, because perhaps in the fullness you could not bear it. It is too, it is too, it is too beautiful. So it has to be a slowly reacquired taste, so that your mind can adjust again to what you are before you became something. So just like that. It is not what many people have thought, like you, you studied and you got something, you captured and you got it. You can't get it. You are it. You have always been it. But wearing various masks, and we took the mask to be ourselves. The mask was meant to be playful, that we would grow somehow through the mask. And one day we would be unmasked. The satsang is unmasking, the unmasking of the self. Hmm? And then at some point you realize every day is your best day. Every moment is your best moment. Okay. Thank you. I want to just to cool things off a little tiny bit. Uh, Wow, oh, yeah, that's for me. <laughs> okay.
So these are a few hmm, letters that come to broadcasting. Pranams Muji, I am blessed to be introduced to your satsangs a few months ago and immensely benefited by it. Many of my doubts got cleared. On very few occasions at the time of doing japa and chanting prayers, I am able to witness myself. That time I could feel immense joy and also feel like crying for no reason at all. Within few minutes, mind comes into play in the form of anxiety to retain that experience. At the time of witnessing, is it the higher high that comes to play? Or is it another trick of my mind? I am confused. I'm going to bring you in, we just read this little section again. On very few occasions at the time of doing japa and chanting prayers, I am able to witness myself. Just on very few occasions. At that time I could feel immense joy and also feel like crying for no reason at all. Within few minutes, mind comes into play in the form of anxiety to retain that experience. I mean, the mind comes and say, I want to have more of that experience. And so, at the time of witnessing, is it the higher high that comes into play? At the time of witnessing, is it the higher high that comes into play? Meaning that, hmm? as the witness, yes, you can say like that, we can say like this, the higher high, meaning that that which is unassociated, it is not identified with any condition, it is just shining as just the high self. Yeah? Or is it another trick of my mind? I am confused. Even though I try to be objective for the things happening around, there are occasions I get carried away and react to situations. As a result, I hurt others and feel guilty for the same. Even though my withdrawal, my withdrawal is fast, but still I am not fully evolved. This hampers my spiritual growth. Please help me. My prostrations at your feet, Guruji, Lakshmi in Bangalore. Still, to, to very much the I person is dominating the letter, still, you see? The report is still from the I person self. And this is why the thing about hurting others and hurting myself and, you know, this sense of guilt and. Uh, confusion, anxiety. When you hear these words, you know immediately the consciousness has gone into the mode of the person because it is only the person that is experiencing problematically. The self cannot perceive things as problems. It, it just does not perceive in that way. So when you feel, I don't know what's going on and my mind is confused, this is always the person, a state that you must come out of it. A state. We were not meant to live only from birth to death in the state of personhood. It was only meant to be a few human seasons that we. I'm saying that, that it was only meant to be. The, the possibility is that with the correct um, pointing and the correct kind of Sangha or support system, you can come out, grow out of the person very quickly. But because the personhood state is also a state of consciousness, and all states of consciousness love itself, it is very difficult to come out of the state, one state to another, you see. So it's only when the state becomes burdensome, it means that those pains have to become the birth pains for the other state, to get to the other state, which is the higher state of consciousness. So. Dear Muji, I'm a medical student, vibrant and happy. However, forces, negative evil, have been surrounding me, attracted by my peace and calm or whatever reason. 
They aim to break me down and keep coming at me while I stay in silence and my peace and aim to, to torment me. I observe, but my body is in pain. I still observe and the attacks intensify. I keep observing and they come together in the form of people and keep coming to my house, surround me. I sense the palpable energy of sulphur. Now I know it's, it's there and it exists. I pray and stay in silence right now, clearing my mind. But I feel I am coming to an energetic vacuum. Muji, your prayer is important to me and I know it will make a difference. Just like the prayer of the entire Sangha is very powerful as well. I need your help, Muji. Maria, broadcast. Yes. Namaste. Namaste. We haven't left the lens from looking from the lens when the lady said we lost that place. Well, losing that place, uh, as is clear, we should understand because it means that, you know, somehow the consciousness began to identify with the earlier condition, conditioning that arose for it that led it to experience from the place of person. So the consciousness is behaving only as a person. When it is behaving as a person, my words about uh, pure consciousness and the state of presence will feel more distant for that consciousness. It will feel like it's, is that really true? Is that some kind of fantasy, is it? But as it begins to, to taste, uh, to self-taste, then it will become naturally convinced that it is possible to be free. Once it becomes convinced it is possible to be free, that the momentum of that, uh, that drive, that urge for freedom will increase very, very fast. And then the mind with all of its trickery, it will become, uh, I would say, uh, insignificant to it. These are the plays that happen in every human uh, form and uh, inner space. We are the unborn. There was many emotions coming when the line was forming to come up. And there was a lot of mind con trying to convince me of all the emotions that were connected to how I was supposed to experience it. But then I would watch them just leave and thoughts would come to perceive what it was and... Yeah. I want to tell you something that the state or the space that I speak about and from is absolutely effortless. It is totally natural. It is totally natural. It is totally effortless. In the world it is not valued chiefly because people are unaware of their true nature. 
we have cultivated somehow, or consciousness you can say, is playing in such a way that the beings, we, human beings, are primarily um, mind-focused, person-focused. And uh, very much because of this, and because we are unaware of our profoundly beautiful nature, so much darkness is playing in the, in the realm of the manifest world. All the pain comes from there, from ego basically, and from fear, which is due to ignorance of the Self, all it comes from there. Awakening to the Self, it used to take on the form that it is a very complex process, and for many it still is. But it is also beautifully simple for those who have the mind for it. It is beautifully simple. Because you have seen sometimes that people can be guided and they follow the guidance and something just pops and that's it. They are back into their original place and it's a place of pure joy, of, of peace. They are not in some fantasy states. They are not on some trip. They have not taken any kind of, you know, sort of like, mind-altering substance or something. It is totally pure. Just the, the, uh, the pure awareness Self that we are. Now, many questions can still be asked about that state as to how does somebody live like that and balance that with ordinary life when you have a family and children and a job? I always have to say at first, don't worry about that. If your higher choice, your higher choice has been to wake up to the Self, it knows perfectly well how to move in, the, in life. It's, uh, it's not that if you wake up to the Self, you're going to be sort of like, you know, falling off bridges or something like that, or bumping into trees. It's not like that. It is, uh, in fact, you're moving with more grace, more, more timing, more, more economy, just more, more, just more beautiful in every way. You see? So, also, you will not be uh, under so much mind attack. The more you stabilize in your heart's uh, natural pace, the attacks from the mind will become uh, uh, trivial, uh, as most of them are, actually. Most of them are. What makes it seem so ugly is our interpretation of, what that, of the play. But it is not... Uh, Everything stands on the strength of your identity. If you, identi if you identify strongly as a person, then you're going to experience a lot of personal problems. But if you are awake as consciousness, you will see that uh, the life is, becomes a joy, basically. So it, the life is reflecting your state of mind, the state of your psyche, is the reading and the impact that life will have, have on you. I find that to, to be very simple. I'm not a very um, schooled uh, or educated person like that. But um, I find what, what, what can be compared to that? What can be compared? The states of um, <clears throat> feeling drunk, um, but not expecting to have some perception about it. Just being, just... Okay. We're good? Yeah. Uh, shop? Thank you. Namaste, Guruji. Namaste, love. Thank you for all your teaching. It's a blessing to be here, and I'm very grateful. Thank you. Um, I was offered the opportunity to, to come to India. It wasn't really planned, but <laughs> the opportunity arose. So 
I decided to take that opportunity. But instead of just taking the opportunity, I quit my job. I packed up my life and I've come to Rishikesh. And I stand now here before you. I found I have peeled away things all my life and I've been on this spiritual journey all my life. I got to the point where I knew that I couldn't go any further where I was. Living in a, in a world where um, everything is focused on belongings and things and maintenance and all of that, um, I became stagnant. I feel that I've peeled away most of my layers and I have very few left and I think they're quite thin. And I had a, a beautiful experience last week after satsang. Um, when I left Australia, I brought with me a, a gift for you and I've written a letter for you. But I didn't have any time to wrap it and I decided that I would come to, I would just leave it and I would come to India and go to the news agency and buy myself some paper and wrapper and wrap this gift. I'd never been to India before. I didn't realize there weren't any news agencies. So um, I looked around, of course, and there were lots of beautiful um, textile places. And I thought, well, that's OK. I can buy myself a piece of material, and I'll cut a square, and I'll buy a bow, and I'll wrap it, and I'll give it to you that way. So I came to Rishikesh, and I'm now in my hotel, and I walk out the front door, and I, I go around the corner, and I see this beautiful little staircase. And, and when I looked at it, what came to mind was, oh, stairway to heaven. <laughs> and it was just a joyous little thing, and I had a bit of a giggle, and I thought, ha ha, and decided, well, to look up, and there's a tailor. So I thought, OK, there's a tailor. He might have material. I walk up to the tailor, and I'm greeted with namaste. Lovely, beautiful person sitting there. I explain that I'm looking for material. And he explains that he doesn't have much material because people buy their own, and they bring them to him, and he sews. But he had a few little pieces there. So I looked and didn't really see anything that I thought was what I wanted. And I looked across and I saw one scrap on a table there, which was just beautiful. So I bought that. I bought a bow and I took it home to sew. I started to cut, but I cut this really odd shape. It wasn't a square. I didn't know where it was going. <laughs> and and I really didn't know what was going to happen with this, but I began to sew. I've never been a devotional person um, in that I've always been a bit of a leader and a, a very independent person. Um, but as I started to sew, every stitch had your name on it. And the needle would go in, and Muji would come to mind, and the needle would go out. And so it was for hours and hours and hours. And eventually, I finished sewing for that day. I'd come to a point where I was just so confused, I had no idea what I was sewing. So I now am faced with this, what looks like a pocket with two points that I have no idea what to do with. So I let it go and I put it down. And then after satsang the next day, I went to the um, little tailor and said, I, I need something, maybe I need a button, maybe I need whatever. I came home with three items and a piece of cord. When I, got, when I came home, I had nothing, I, I really didn't know what to do with this. And I went to bed that night, I went to sleep, and in my sleep, I saw my four fingers coiling the cord that I had bought. Then I knew what I had to do. The next morning I got out of bed and I thought, aha, 
I remembered the dream. I knew what I had to do. So the next day after satsang, I started to sew and I did exactly what was shown me in the dream. I still, though, had no idea what was going to happen or how this was going to end. It certainly was no square. And it, so it went on until eventually it was finished. Now, I know that the gift that I have brought you from Australia, I have brought from my persona. I know the letter that I have written with the gift is from my persona. The, the gift is an accompaniment to the letter that I have brought you. But I can honestly say to you that the wrapping it comes in did not come from me, the persona. And I would really like to give that to you, if I may. Okay. You made this also? Yes, it's oh. not necessary to open it now. Really? No. <laughs> Thank you. Do we have somebody coming today? We are
love grows, love grows, like a flower grows from the earth to the sky. Love flows, love flows, like a river flows, flows on by.
Thank you so much for all the pointing. And uh, uh, I've come to the point where you are asking, uh, can the perceiver be perceived? I have been with it. And uh, I've come to the point where I'm just awareness, aware of awareness. It's just there. Uh, and uh, I was waiting for somebody to come up with something at this point, but uh, I'm waiting for your response. And uh, I'm at this point. Just awareness, aware of awareness. What more? No more. <laughs> It's just played awareness. You sound frustrated. <laughs> say again now what you say. You say that you have come to this point, that there is just awareness, being aware of awareness. Yes. You come to this point? Yes. What else is there now? Isn't there a beautiful silence? Isn't there a great peace? Hmm? Where, where, what are you comprised of in, in realizing this? Hmm? It's your turn today. Come on then. Speak up and say. I don't know what to say, but it's. Uh, I'm at this point and I don't know what to do. See, I, this is. Uh, uh, no, no. I, uh, you say your counterpart kind of is only awareness, being aware of awareness. Then who is it that don't know what to do? I don't know what to do. Awareness doesn't know what to do? Not like that. So, uh, it can only be like this if it is a mental conclusion? It's not a mental conclusion. Ah. It is not a mental conclusion. I'm okay. very clear that… Uh, it's very clear, it's very clear. It, but… Uh, so where does it come from to say then, you know, but the mind has something? I know it's… Uh, the, the mind play also is made out and it's dropped. As you say, you know, the one who thinks, the click has to occur, that fellow has to be dropped. Click has not occurred, the one who wants to know that the click… Has, both have to be dropped. That also is kept aside. And… Uh, when you leave everything aside… Yes. And you've done now yes. your, your research, you've looked, you come to awareness. Yes. When you look for what was left aside, is it still there, waiting? Not that, not at present, it's not there. Okay, what is there now? What is there? I can tell you from past experience. No. At present there is no, there is none. Every time I come to this point mm. and I'm here, but then in interaction, uh, the… Nothing has changed, nothing has changed. Hmm? Suppose a king uh, uh, goes inside the kitchen and makes an omelette, does he become a chef? No. All right, so. Your, your, your idea, you realize this thing, the body's there, you go and people come and says, you know, so what, what, what's happening today and so on and you, ah, I wish you hadn't said that, I've lost my awareness now or what, how, how it could be? Because uh, if, suppose you're, you're a family person, when you wake up, uh, you know, your children are still there, no? What they're going, what's going to happen? They'll say, Mom, you know, uh, you know, can I, 
can you make us something, please, for breakfast this morning? And whatever answer will come, will come. There's nothing to do, there's nothing. And now a new, perhaps you may find that where it used to be that they could manipulate you, it doesn't happen anymore. The consciousness won't play that anymore. It doesn't feel guilt when they go, oh, you don't love me anymore. It won't, uh, it won't be falling into those sort of traps. It would be so marvelous and on every level. How can speaking with someone then put you into despair or, or into some altered state? It's nothing at all. Everything, even you're speaking with other people, is automatic. It becomes it's so spontaneous. That's why I say automatic. I mean spontaneous, you know? Hmm? They said, no. When I heard one, one Buddhist saying, before enlightenment, chopping wood. After enlightenment, chopping wood. No? I thought about it, I said, I added something to it. Before enlightenment, chopping wood. After enlightenment, chopping wood, but no wood chopper. Ah. <laughs> See, Moji, I don't get these Eureka th things. I don't get that. <laughs> and this expansion, all that is not happening. <laughs> it, it, what, it, 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 Does it, it matter? No, it's, 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 it's not a package deal that comes, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, the package, where's my uh, extra bonus? I don't find no extra bonus. <laughs> It is enough that you, you see clearly. Maybe, maybe that may come at another stage. We don't know, is it? Listening to people saying, yes, you know, you know, I was walking and then sort of like, you know, a bird pooed on my head and ah, it was something like that. And people think, oh, they're looking around for birds. <laughs> uh, it's not like that, no? Who doesn't know how it's going to happen? Maybe no birds in your country. Uh, so, there's no standard I can give you. What a beautiful thing to know. Yes. You see, you came to, uh, I'm listening to see if you have come to uh, a, 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 a resounding experiential conclusion. That, but it's just this, Uji, yes. it's just this. It was this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, Tuesday. Look, it's, it can't stop. It can never stop. Yes. Muji, it is said, uh, this is, these are things which I have heard that uh, those who, are, uh, who have come to this awareness, they are aware even in waking, dream and deep sleep. Who told you that? I mean, you know, enjoy your sleep, I mean. <laughs> In your pajamas. I mean, enjoy sleep, it's still nice to sleep. I said one time, supposing there was one Swami, no, an awakened being, that slept for twenty-four hours, twenty-four hours, yeah, and fifty-five minutes every day. Okay, <laughs> every day, sleep, huh? Yeah? Twenty-three, twenty-three. How many hours in a twenty-three? <laughs> You see, I mean, what to say? He slept for 23 hours and 55, say, say 57 minutes. 23 hours, 57 minutes every day. He wake up for three minutes and he, 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 he goes to the loo. The loo. He comes out and uh, lights a cigarette, roll a cigarette and 
and then just looks uh, and go back to sleep. Okay? Okay? He just looks, just looks at you, just looks. Whoever is there, just. Uh, huh? But maybe that look, maybe just in that look, for one second, he smashes your mind. No, so it's possible. Could you, could you have a guru like that? Good. Twenty-three hours, fifty-seven minutes. Get up for three minutes, go to the bathroom, and um, roll tobacco. Have a drink and loose. Could you? I mean, that would say something about you as well. You must be really switched on. You know? Or maybe you sleep for 23 hours as well. I don't know. But just make sure that I'm awake in those three minutes, okay? And then you're there, really, really. In that, can you imagine the level of concentration in you? If for just those three minutes, you are really, mm, you'll really be there just because you don't want to miss. And now we have all this time. All this time now, what's happening? Too much time, no? Huh? I'm sleeping in this time too. But don't listen to what other people say about these things. You don't worry about any of that. Yes, sir. Yeah, really, don't look at it Thank because it only is a distraction. And so on, you see, you don't know how you don't know how it's done. Don't know anything at all. Yes. You simply just watch and see that. Wait a second. But everything that is coming goes. Everything is coming. It's just coming. Why to spend the time just watching things that are going anyway? At a certain point, you naturally feel, look to something else because the traffic is non-stop. Is one thought after another thought? Then how can anybody watch this after a while? You say, no, no. I, I get the story. Everything is flowing here. Nothing is so stable. Whether you like it or you hate it, it's still just flowing by. Okay. What notices this thing here? It's noticed. Where is the noticing coming from? Is it notice? Is the noticing coming from there? No. Is it coming from here? No. It's coming from. It's notice here. It takes you, it takes you back here, and you come to a silence. It is coming into a silence, isn't it? You're feeling a silence. Thought comes something. Oh, if don't forget to send this email today, but that doesn't disturb. And this, you are in your in your introspection. This is nothing at all. You don't even fighting with your mind. You're not feeling frustrated with your mind anymore. It's become such a small thing. Before it was a big, big thing. Now mind is nothing at all because you are in a concentrated field. Uh, people come and say, "Oh, this is happening." Uh, it doesn't feel like anything at all. And after a while, you look. There's nothing is anything particularly. Yet you are not disappointed. You're not disgusted. You're not cynical about the world. You are simply here. Actions are happening, reactions are happening, interactions are happening. They are happening spontaneously, but no one can guess your state, or maybe they can. They come and they they come into your presence. Somehow they move into what feels like your orbit, and somehow their minds become empty. Also, that could happen for some people. This is how some people have discovered great sages. Nobody knew of these sages. But some people came and were sitting down by them, eating a banana or something. I said, "Whoa, I feel amazingly good. Why? What did I eat?" And then after a while, they say, "Wait a second. Every time I come near this guy, I feel good. Or this woman I came, I saw, sat down. Every time I'm with her or next to her, I'm feeling so marvelous. You don't, you don't know." 
your whole family is going to be different. The way that they respond, because the one they used to respond to, according to their is not longer there, is not there in that way anymore. A higher presence is there. But that higher presence is you also. Isn't it funny? The old one is not there. But it's like a higher presence is there. But this higher presence is more you. But the, the ignorant person will come and say, Hey, what's happened to you? You're not like you used to be. You're not the same. You know? Why are you so quiet? They never say, Why are you so peaceful? Say, Why are you so quiet? Why are you always in the room by yourself? Because you're not out drinking. But it's not anything at all. They don't, they don't know what they're saying also. It's not a big deal at all. It's nothing is a big deal. Nothing is a big deal. It's only how you relate to it. You're taking it to be something and you get exaggerated in your own mind and then you say that's how the thing is. It's not how anything is. You know what an awakened being is? It's a joy to this world. It is showing the highest possibility of a human life. A human being who is not against anyone at all. He's not afraid of death or life. Whose mind is not in a war with their heart. They have overcome it. Still some things, they may have some family trouble. You could be an awakened being and you have family trouble a little bit, but you are not so troubled. We don't know. Their life is unpredictable. But no one has gone there and regretted it. I want you to complete your point because it seemed really strong for me and then suddenly <sighs> what is happening like that this uh, this this point of being aware of awareness th sometimes the uh, attention uh, we don't, I don't want to say it like that. I don't want to frighten anybody to be aware of awareness. It starts to sound really, you know, you're, you're just uh, here. Yeah. And uh, your, your mind doesn't trouble you anymore. Suppose you live in a place and one neighbor is always disturbing you. Wherever you go, they, they break your window, they break into your house, they're always causing trouble. You know, and uh, then they leave town or he dies. <laughs> you know? What a relief. <laughs> so, total relief. I said, My God, Jesus. You know, bless you, but I'm really happy you're gone. It's really, really nice. You are, you are at peace now? It's even more beautiful than that. It's even more beautiful than that. It's more peaceful than that. What they can really. I want someone to tell me it is like this or not. But the mind has not dissolved. The mind is not. Not dissolved means that it keeps coming up and you keep going to it. Look, a thought cannot think itself. It only arises, and if it doesn't have contact with a thinker entity, nothing comes of it. It simply just disappears. It must be contacting some point of interest and copulating with that point and producing more thought or something. Otherwise, there's no thinking. A thought arising is not thinking. 
It's just a thought arising. No? If it's chattering, yes. who is it chattering to? To the awareness? No, awareness is not interested. Though. What can awareness benefit from the? You see, can the can the can the moon go to the sun and say, "Listen, you want to borrow some light?" No, it's 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 it, it, it's it's not at all like that. So you are no interest in what the mind is saying. Where would the interest to the mind in its nonsense talk be coming from? There must be some res residue of some kind of personal, you know, things. And that, and that is watched, and the moment is ah, it's nothing at all. That will also get starved out. That's nothing yes, yes. soon gone. Not Sometimes true. when alertness is low, alertness in the sense uh, where slight sleepiness comes to that extent, then uh, the tendency to go away with images. When images come, it goes away. Then recognition. Oh. Still don't mean anything. Suppose your name is George, okay, and uh, you know. When you are active, doing all your stuff, George, yeah! When you are very passive and tired and good for nothing, are you still not George? Still George? Yes, yes. Huh? Whatever state you are in, you are sick. <laughs> George, it doesn't sound like you. I am still George. It doesn't matter, you are George, 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 George. Okay? So it's the same. Yes. Whatever is happening in the mind, why you say, but now my mind, it means nothing at all. Yes, 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 yes. Simple like that, simple like that. There, there was a cobweb that everything should go away and it should become just plain. Like, how it, how it goes away, goes how away. things go away is that you lose interest in them. Yes, yes. If you think the man, you're going to come one day and the man is packing his bag. Sorry, I'm. <laughs> I've got to go now. I'm not going to be with you any longer. I'm tired of living here, and you never feed me enough, and I'm leaving. <laughs> okay. And he's walking out the door, and the man's going, uh, That would be great. You think, That would be really great. You know? But is it going to happen? No. It's not, everything is going to leave. It's not leaving. You're finished with it. You're not interested in something, it dies right there. You cannot be molested by something you have no interest in it. Yes, yes. It, it doesn't exist. It doesn't register in your consciousness that it even appeared. Yes, yes. You have no interest in it. Yes, yes, yes. This is why I say that you are perceiving what you are conceiving. You see? Uh, you look at things, you are walking around, you walk in the market, you come straight here, no trouble. Why? You are not particularly interested in anything there. What did you see? Well, nothing actually. You walked through Varanasi. What did you notice today? Well, nothing. Because uh, you're not particularly interested. That is how it is that everything becomes empty. Because you're empty. You're not interested in those things anymore. You have found the Lord inside your heart. That's all. That's all. You are happy. Not interested in that. You can talk about it, and a great love comes. To maybe to help to direct the attention of people to where it needs to be, that's it. But you're not going to be the one chit chatting about all kind of nonsense because it's uh, you see the valuelessness of that and how you burden people with personal stories. We all think that we entertain people with our personal stories, they're dying to death to be <laughs> just. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's <laughs> good.
Oh, I'm sorry, I'll have to walk out. It's getting too hot, isn't it? It gets a bit hotter. We should put the fans on. So. <laughs> but sometimes we, we, we're not in touch enough there. Sometimes somebody needs to be reminded to do that. Right. Well, it was, it was cooler earlier on than uh -huh. just... It, it's nice here on the machine. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Everybody's been so helpful. Ah, yeah. Nice to see you. Same to you. That's my daughter. Your daughter. Hello. Nice to see you. Oh, darling. No, 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 no. I understand what mommy said. That is good. Where are you from? Here? Australia. 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 Yes. I'm trying to get into this with a fan. So. We do. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Where are you staying? The Great Ganga. The Great Ganga. Great Ganga. I don't know this place. I may not forget you even for a second.
Thank you. 